When one hears of submarine warfare in the Second World War, one is quick to think of the dark and damp conditions, as well as the tense moments while being both the predator and the prey. Submarine warfare was one of the most dangerous areas of operations in the Second World War on all sides. For the United States, out of 16,000 submarine crew members, approximately 3,400 were lost at sea. With such a high casualty rate, any way to inspire hope and increase morale was sought out. This video will dive into one of the ways the US Navy attempted to keep its personnel alive following the events of a catastrophe, more specifically the Momsen Lung, and the ways it put the crews that were equipped with it slightly more at ease. To understand the device and its origins, we must first understand the inventor. Charles Bowers Momsen was a naval officer who was commissioned from the Naval Academy in 1919. After a short stint on a battleship, he began to take command of the US Navy's latest and greatest submarines. It wasn't until he was assigned to SS, or Submersible Ship 105, or S1 as it was known, that he quickly realized submariners won backups in case of an emergency. On September 25, 1925, their sister ship, SS-162, suffered a collision and thus sank at 130 feet of water. But with limited technology at the time, there were no way to locate or rescue the crew of the stricken submarine. So, Momsen began to explore alternative methods for rescuing or escape methods for stranded crew members. It wouldn't be until the 17th of December 1927 when the highly controversial incident regarding USS S-4 or SS-109 occurred, where it was conducting various speed and maneuverability drills submerged just off the east coast, when all of a sudden Coast Guard destroyer USCGC Paulding was searching the waters for rum runners of the Prohibition era. Then at 3.37pm, S-4 began to surface. The destroyer became aware of its presence after spotting the wakes of its periscopes, but it was too little, too late. The sub was struck just forward of its deck gun, and initially most of the crew would survive the immediate impact. The sub, however, would sink down to a depth of 110 feet. Very quickly though, water mixed in with the batteries and quickly tainted the air. Furthermore, the way the submarine was hit led to portions of it to be sealed off in order to preserve the rest of the submarine. And thus, it eliminated the crew's ability to raise the submarine using the ballast. Most of the crew from here would not survive the second night, but six men would. Divers attempted to reach these men, but due to weather, they weren't able to effectively rescue them. They did transmit a few messages, where the now famous Lieutenant Fitch asked, is there any hope? Sadly, there would not be any hope for the remaining crew. By the time an airline was successfully brought down, it was tested and revealed that the CO2 level was too high for anyone inside to survive. These men did not realize at the time, but they greatly impacted the way the Navy viewed submarine rescue efforts. Eventually, their submarine would be refitted and recommissioned to test submarine rescue efforts. This incident was widely publicized and ignited outcry from the general public and Congress. It was then realized that something needed to be done to increase the odds of survival. After this incident, Momsen got back to work on effective ways to help save stranded submarine crews. He then came up with a submarine escape lung, which the press called the Momsen lung after its creator. The lung worked by using a container, also known as a counter lung, that contained soda lime, which would assist in removing carbon dioxide from the oxygen that was breathed into it. This counter lung was connected to a mouthpiece via twin hoses with the one-way valves, one for breathing out and one for breathing in. It is then worn around the user's neck with a strap around the waist. Once a working prototype was conceived, tests started in diving tanks with volunteer divers. Momsen himself always dove first at each new depth they went to. He then decided to demonstrate his lung, so in 1929 he chose to be lowered to a depth of 61 meters, or 200 feet, which was deeper than previous submarine incidents had occurred in and he then ascended using his own device. This action would lead to him being awarded a Navy Distinguished Service Medal for personally demonstrating that his device was functional and a valid means of escape. It would be in 1944 that the Mumson Lung would see its first operational use. The USS Tang, or SS-306, was in the East China Sea conducting operations. After successfully engaging several targets, the last torpedo that Tang had was fired and malfunctioned. This led to it circling around and impacting the Tang in the aft torpedo room. The tank then sank to a depth of 55 meters or 180 feet. From there, 13 men would gather and use the Momsen lung to escape out of the stricken submarine. Even still, due to further complications, only 5 men would survive and be rescued using the Momsen lung as their escape method. A further 4 would survive by exiting prior to the 13 that used the lung. The Momsen lung would be replaced by the Steinke Hood in 1962. This new phase of underwater survival equipment built upon the foundations that Charles Momsen himself founded and thus contributed to crews further odds of survival. And that's going to wrap up another video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. 
I appreciate all feedback. It always helps me adjust my craft as needed. And with that said, I'll catch you on the next one.